Hey everyone, today I want to talk about a little physics problem. So in this situation, somebody throws a bowling ball and it hits the ground, sliding with initial speed v naught. Over time, frictional forces on the ball are going to cause it to rotate. At a certain point, the ball will be rotating without slipping. The goal of the problem is to find the final speed of the bowling ball when it rolls without slipping. Find the time that this happens. Alright, I'm going to start just by writing down a little note of what we're looking for to define when something rolls without slipping. This occurs when our linear velocity equals our angular velocity times the radius. Let's go ahead and create a free body diagram of this ball, and then we'll go from there. This is going to be a very simple free diagram, of course. There's just our center of mass right there. Go ahead and throw in some axes, just because it's good to do. The force acting on our ball is simply friction. So if our direction to the right is positive and to the left is negative, we can go ahead and set up sigma f equals ma on the ball, and the only force is a negative little f, which equals ma. I'm going to do the same relationship for the torque. So. I'm just going to set up the sigma torque equals I alpha. And in this case, the torque is contributing to the positive direction relative to the linear force. So our torque, if this ball has a radius of R, and this torque is RF, and this equals I times alpha. Beautiful. The reason why I've put this dashed line is we're basically doing two separate routes. Our goal is to come up with uh, a linear velocity as a function of time here on the left, and on the right, the goal is to come up with an omega as a function of time. From there, what we're going to do is using this rolling without slipping condition, I'm going to set the velocity equal to the omega times r. From there, I'll be able to solve from time, and that way I'll be able to solve for velocity from there. So I'm just going to go ahead and label these two paths. This is linear. This is angular. So from here, we'll go ahead and isolate uh, our linear acceleration, f over m equals a. We can substitute in for a dv over dt. I'm going to move my dt to the other side, negative f over m dt equals dv. I integrate both sides, and this ends up giving me negative f over m times t plus v naught equals v as a function of t. Perfect. On the right side, we're going to do 
basically the same thing. RF over I equals alpha. RF over I equals d omega over dt. RF over I. Uh, oops, dt equals d omega. Integrate both sides. RFT over I equals omega as a function of time. Oh, right. And we just need a plus and omega naught here. That being said, I'm going to very quickly remove this omega naught because what we see is that our initial angular speed when the ball hits the ground is zero. Okay? So this can go away. There's one more step that we need to uh, use, and that is know that our I for uh, a sphere is two fifths m squared. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and substitute that in. So we have RFT over two-fifths MR squared. We can see that one of those R's is going to cancel out, leaving us with five halves FT over MR. Perfect. So we have our two pieces now. There's our linear velocity, there's our angular velocity as a function of time. And remember what I said the goal was, is we're going to set these equal to each other. Well, not equal to each other, we're going to multiply the omega times R and then set that equal to the velocity. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So I say negative f over m times t plus v naught equals 5 halves ft over mr times r. These r's are going to cancel out. I'm going to move this ft term to the right side. Not equals seven halves ft over m. I'm going to isolate t, and I get t, and I'm going to go ahead and give this a special label. We're going to call this t and s, or t not slipping. So t not slipping equals two sevenths not m over f. Perfect. We've accomplished one of the goals of the problem. And let me fix that box. There we go. We've accomplished one of the goals of the problem, which is to find the time that uh, this rolling without slipping condition occurs. Now, all we need to do to find the actual velocity is to plug this back in to our uh, velocity function. Let's just go ahead and copy this, just to be super clear about what we're doing. I'm going to find the velocity at time t and s, so I'm just going to plug that time back in. So we have negative f over m times TNS, which is 2 sevenths V naught M over F plus V naught. Our frictions are going to cancel out. Our masses are also going to cancel out. How convenient. So we end up getting that V TNS equals negative 2 sevenths V 
V naught plus V naught, which equals five sevenths V naught. Beautiful. And there we go. There's our answers to the problem. Now before I end this video, let's go ahead and just make a note that the time that it takes to reach this rolling out, this rolling without slipping condition, is dependent on the strength of the frictional force. If the friction is weaker, then this time goes up. This intuitively makes sense, right? Because basically the, the bowling ball doesn't have as much grip to the ground, so it would take longer for it to reach that rolling without slipping condition. On the other hand, the actual velocity stays constant, right? It doesn't change at all with the strength of the frictional force, only the amount of time that it takes to reach that condition. So with that note, I hope you enjoyed that little problem, and thanks for watching.